So basically what we're going to be doing today is taking another look at substitution and some things we can do with these. And I tried to give you at least some more room to the side this time. I know it's a little odd looking, but it, it'll work for our purposes. So what I would kind of recommend again is any time when you're looking at substitution, we're looking to see do one of the equations say x equals or y equals? Because that's the value that I'm going to be plugging into the other equation. So what I'm going to do here is just on these first few that we've got on the screen here, I'm going to go, I'm going to find either my x equals or my y equals, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to get those boxed in. And again, the reason I'm doing that is, the whole reason behind substitution as a whole is we're going to get this down to one variable. I can't really solve this very easily if there's two. So once I box it, I'm like, okay, it says y equals. What that means is I'm going to be plugging that value in to here. In other words, I'm going to take out the y and I'm going to replace it with what's in the box. Or on number two, it says y equals. I'm going to take this and I'm going to replace y with what's in the box and so on. So my first step is always going to be, okay, so I'm plugging this into here. So I have x plus, but now I'm not going to put y in here. I'm going to kind of do one of these. And I'm going to replace it. Oh, I should, didn't even change my color. Oh, well. I will on the next one. So basically, I just rewrote the first equation, took out the y, and replaced it with what's in the box. But you'll notice now, I've only got one variable left, x, which is a good thing, because now I can actually solve this. I don't have any distributing to do. So I can go ahead and I can combine my things that are alike because they're on the same side of the equals. So I got 1x here and 2 more gives me 3. And now it's just a regular two-step equation that so many of you breeze through when we're doing these. And again, my whole idea is to get my x by itself. So I can go ahead, I can minus my 4. I'm getting a little tight on room here, so I'm going to come up here. 13 minus 4 is 9. And then I'll just do my dividing and be ready to go. Now again, remember, when I'm doing these, there's two variables. Now I figured out what x is. Okay, I got the first job done. My second job is a quick one. It's just to take that y equals equation now where the box is. I'm just going to plug the 3 back in for x. So my second job is just to take this x value that I just found and plug it back in. And this will be like the quickest job you get with any of these types of forms that we're working with. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 4 is 10. And we're always going to write our answers in coordinate form. And coordinate form is always going to be in the form of my x value and then my y, just like in the alphabet. So 3, <coughs> 10. And that's my final answer that I'm going to write down. So there is some work involved with this, especially in that first step when I'm doing the substitution. But it's something that shouldn't make life too terribly awful on us here. And I won't put you through doing every single one of these. I'm going to sort of bop around a little. I do want to do number two, though. Same idea. What's in the box goes in for that variable. So my first job, so I've got x plus, remember my color this time, the box replaces the y. So x plus 4 equals 14. And I always like to put the parentheses around whatever I substitute, just in case there happens to be a number in front. And we'll get to one of those examples here next. So I look and I'm like, OK, got an x in each of those spots. So x plus x is 2x. And just like ended up in number one, now I've got a quick two-step equation to work with with my job being to get that x by itself. I don't know 
know if that green's going to show up too well. I think we're going to have to quit using it. So I've got 2x left on this side because the plus and minus 4 are gone. 14 minus 4 is 10. And then that last step's typically going to be divide. So I have my x value, I have my first number, and then my last job is just to plug that back into the box. y equals my x is 5 plus 4, which is 9. And I've got my answer. Now, will it be that quick every time where I just plug it in and I'm basically combining like terms and going? Not every time. It, it depends. Well, what's it depend on? Well, let's say like we have something like number 4. It depends on this replaces y, okay, but it doesn't replace the 2. So when I'm doing this one, bless you, I've got x plus 2. My y is being replaced by what's in the box. But notice the 2 is still there. The only thing that got replaced is this. So I do have one extra step this time because that 2 gets distributed to the x and to the minus 10. Then everything else will be the same. So I got 2x and 2 times negative 10 is minus 20. And my one other thing that's different here is I've got those like terms. So, if I got 1x, I add 2 more to it. Gives me 3. And once I've done that, again, just like we've done in those first two, my job's to get the 3x alone. So since I'm minusing 20 from it, I do the opposite. And you're like, dang, it seems like we divide the last step every time. And more times than not, we will. And again, let the calculator help you out if you want to do some things. So once I have my first value, again, my second one's going to be wherever the equation is that has the box. So let me do this. We're going to bring this down here. So basically, it's just y equals... I know what x is now, it's 8, it's kind of like solving a puzzle here, minus 10, which is negative 2, and I've got my answer. And it doesn't mean necessarily that every time it's going to have to be something large and complex that's going on, because there's just a couple more I want to take a peek at here. Okay? I want to take a peek at 5, and then I think we're going to take a peek at 9 here. Just so we have an idea of how these all work. Yeah. Which one are you running into with that? Or six? Okay. We'll hit that one up here too here then. Cause I don't. I didn't think any of these were going to come out as decimals, but you never know. Sometimes that can happen. So all right, we're going to try five. Then we're going to check and see what's up with six here. Cause that's kind of strange. All right. So five it says y equals. So I'm going to plug it in where the y goes here. So step one, I've got three, but y is what's in my box. So that's 2x plus 2x equals 48. Because I still copy the rest of the problem. The only thing that's changing is that y. Here, oh, you got it? OK. So three times two would be 6x. And all we're really doing here, this time I just have my like terms. This is going to go quick. 3x, 3x, 6x plus 2x is 8x. And I'm already to my divide step. I don't even have to add or subtract anything else because these were like terms I could put together. So divide by 8. 
get my first answer. Hey, I like this. And then y equals 2 times x. Well, x is 6. So y is just 2 times 6, which is 12. So they're not always going to be real long. Sometimes they'll go a little bit faster. Okay, But the big thing is going to be watching out for signs and you know, not substituting for things that aren't actually there. I think I can squeeze these both in. Yes, I can leave that one alone and still come down to 9. So 9, our last one we're going to look at on this sheet, always looking for something that's got, well in this case it's t equals instead of x or y, but again, I'm always looking to find that one that has a variable by itself, because that's going to tell me where the substitution is going to be. So on 9, it says t equals, so it's going to go in right there for that t value. So again, my first step, minus 7, but I know what t is, so I put what's in the box down where that t is at. Again, don't eliminate the 7, just the t part. Okay, so t out, 24 minus 2r in. And once I get that, my next job, whenever I see parentheses, is to distribute. Because I've got to get rid of the parentheses before I can finish the problem. And this definitely may be some calculator help here. Negative 7 times 24 is negative 168. Negative 7 times negative 2. It's those little things that can mess you up on this if you're not careful. Oops, and I almost did it. Negative times negative is positive. Get this right yet. And then I stop for a second and I go, okay, what's next? Well, here's kind of my wall for my equation. I see two terms that have r on the same side. So I'm going to put those together. So 10 plus 14 would be 24r. Okay, but the 168 doesn't have an r, so I can't put it together with the other two. And then my whole job again just becomes getting that r on a side by itself. I'm minusing 168 from it, so I do the opposite. We always do the stuff that's furthest away from our variable. We get it out of there first. So 24R, add the 168 over. Zero plus anything will just be the number, so that's where the 168's coming from. And then my last step is to divide by the 24. And if some of you wonder sometimes, you're like, well, how do you know? Like, this is an x and y. It's like r and t. How do you figure out what goes first and what goes second? Always do things in alphabetical order. So, like, r comes before t. Or if I was doing the one in number 8, l comes before m. Always just go from, you know, which comes first in the alphabet. So then my last part here on this one is to plug this 7 in for where r is at. And again, I'm just replacing the R. So 2 times 7 is 14. And 24 minus 14 is 10. And I'm ready to roll. So again, these aren't going to be a whole lot different from what we've been doing. I know it was a long time ago being Friday, but it's the same idea. And keep these handy again, because again, these might be useful come the end of the week. Okay, when we get to the quiz time. The only type of question that I think we didn't cover is going to be one that I want to do with you on the homework. Because, well, I don't want you to have it. Well, I see one other one that might be goofy too. So I see a couple we're going to do. So keep this handy, but we're going to switch over to the homework sheet, and again, this is assignment four in our homework check that's coming up. So be looking out for those other ones if you're not sure. And you're like, okay, well, what's, what's this weird stuff you're talking about? The very first problem. You're like, wait a minute, they're both y equals. So how do I do this? 
if they're the same, so they're both y equals, they're both x equals, sort of like letter i is down here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set those two expressions equal to each other. So I'm not going to substitute them in, per se, for something else. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to substitute it in for y there. So basically, I just set them equal to each other. So, and it wouldn't matter which way I'd have done it. If I'd have done it with the x plus 1 in for here, that would work as well as 2. But here's the difference. Now, my like terms aren't on the same side of the equals. So I can't just throw them together. I've got to do an opposite. So like if I want to move this negative 9x to be with this x, I've got to do an opposite since they're not on the same side of the equals. But that's only when they're not on the same side of the equals. That's not every time. And now it looks something a little more like what we're used to dealing with. Because you're like, oh yeah, because now my job is to get the 10x by itself, because that's the only place there's any x's left at all anymore. So as I get these situated, my last step's just going to be to divide. And I'll have the first value in my answer. And then just like we did before, whichever one I decided to box, so I happen to box this bottom one, I'm just going to take that and I'm going to plug, oops, back myself up here. And I know what x is now. It's negative 1. And this would work with either one in this case, but negative 9 times negative 1 is 9. Minus 9 is 0. And I get my answer. So if they're both in y equals or x equals, that's what i got to do. Yes, sir? So you can box uh, whichever one you want to do? If they're both x equals or y equals, you can box either one. Right. OK? And then the only other one I believe on here that's really, really weird. Let me flip over here for just a second. I want to make sure before I say, yep, I see it. On the back side, the weird one on this page is letter R. She's like, wait a minute, neither of them are in Y equals or X equals. So, so how's that work? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to make one of them work that way. So here's what my plan would be. I'm going to go ahead in this top one, and I'm going to get that x by itself. I'm going to have to do a little work, but it's all right. How do I move that minus y to the other side? Add it. So I'm going to plus y. So this is now x equals negative 6 plus y. And once I have that, I can take that value and plug it in for my x. So, so it is taking me a little bit longer on what we're doing. After that one step, again, my job becomes to plug this into this one. So the x is going to get replaced by what I put in the box. And we'll actually learn a way when we get to our next part of this unit on how I could deal with this problem and not have to solve for the y. There's actually a quicker way probably for this one. I got parentheses, so I'll always do my distributing first. This might be the most complex one we've seen yet because now I've got y's in different places, but here's what's different than the last one we did. They're on the same side of the wall. They're on the same side of the equals this time. So I'm just going to put these together, but be careful. Just because it's combined doesn't mean it gets bigger. 3y minus a y makes it 2y. So combined doesn't always mean it goes up in value. And then I'm just working on getting y by itself. So I want to get that minus 18 out of there, so I'll add it. We're almost there, I know. 
seems like this problem is never going to end. And then I just do my last little divide and I've got my y, but be careful, y is the second value because y comes after x and it does matter the order I put them in. If I put that 7 in the first spot, it wouldn't be right. And so my last job then, my second step, is to plug that y value in here. So x equals negative 6 plus 7. <coughs> y out, 7 in. Negative 6 plus 7 is a positive 1. And I'm ready to go. But again, the key... If you see x or y equals somewhere, always box that in first. If there's the same variable and they're both, you know, they're both, you're like, well, x equals on both of them. Just pick one. It doesn't matter. Pick one and plug it into the other for that same variable. Okay, just don't switch variables on me. Okay. They're both x equals. Okay, I'll plug that in there. Just like we did number one on the front. And they will all come out as whole numbers. That's the nice thing. On the bottom of your sheet are what the different answers could be. So if you get to an end and you're getting a fraction or some weird number, see if it matches up with one of those answers. Because if it does, then you know it's going good. And if not, well, then we've got to go back and look at something again. But like I said, we will be taking a peek at a quiz preview tomorrow on graphing and using substitution. And then Friday we'll be having homework check two and our second quiz of the term.